from the outside, like I said, and, and what you've just spoken about is so much happiness and, and warmth and love, but there's also been dark times and there's been some, some difficult times lately. If you're open to it, would you be able to talk to us about what, what happened with your dad recently? Yeah, so uh, February 11, 20, what are we, 23, 22, 2022, I got a phone call from my uh, half-sister to say that dad had passed which was a huge shock and then found that he um committed suicide so the dad was someone that I didn't have a lot to do with when I was younger but would sort of be there every now and then um it was almost so I could avoid paying maintenance to mum but mum wasn't worried about that but back then the government would f- find him and pretty much make the make payments and so he'd just go underground basically and as soon as we'd find where we were it was just more to say day. and he sort of felt as though he just had to spend money on us all the time to make up but I just wanted to spend time with him you know so over the time as we got older you know I talked to him a lot more um and yeah it was really cool and then towards the end there was moments where he'd just sort of say Stevie I'm tired I'm worn out I'm you know I'm done sort of thing um and he'd said that a lot through his life um so I didn't really t- see it as as what ended up happening but and now now I look back on it I sort of thought well maybe I should have said or done something more but you know talking to people in that situation you're always going to have unanswered questions and you can't wrap yourself up in anxiety and that about what you could have done because at the end of the day it's done and it's and that's the saddest thing about that situation it's forever so um leaves a lot of people behind that that um that miss that person like I, I it was his birthday the other day uh you'd get a random call or I'd ring him and he was very unique dad very different to me and and that type of thing but you'd really look forward to it so uh I just disappointed I suppose for the kids their grandfather's not going to see their kids or, you know, and, and that type of thing. Um, and he would have loved that. But, yeah, it is what it is. Um, it, I was on the show uh, on the first anniversary, so I didn't really know how to how to handle it. Um, and, yeah, a lot of the guys on the show were really – were amazing. Um, spoke about it around the campfire one night and, yeah, sort of opened up a lot of people to talk about different things in their life as well, which um, – yeah, put things in, in perspective and really helped. So I didn't really know um, how I should have felt. That was the hardest thing. Um, so, In a weird way, it's amazing that you were able to share that experience with some people who have, maybe have some tools in their tool set through the show to be able to kind of help you around yeah. that period. Well, and then to actually understand that there's some people that are, had a bit worse off experiences, you know, like was, uh, and I didn't say anything on the day because I, I didn't want – I don't know, I just didn't want people to feel sorry for me or anything like that. So you're trying to be this big tough person, but people could tell like there was something something wrong and they, and they kept asking me, are you all right? And I go, yeah, 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 no, I'm all good. Uh, but then, it, yeah, it was that night where I just sort of said, I'm really sorry, there's nothing going on here because you're in a game and you, you don't mm. want people to feel as though that there's any – um, under, piss you underlying, off or like that, right? yeah, underlying issue. They're taking the rice and not not ask, not, <laughs> yeah, not, ask, not ask permission for it. Or that. There you go. So yeah, that was one of the the things that I was I wanted to be really open in the show and just be myself. So it took me all day to build the courage up to do that. And then when I did it, um, yeah, it was incredible how then the conversation. And I think if anything, it taught me um, that by talking to people that I suppose you can trust, the the actual benefit you get from it is unknown and so huge. Like it was so soothing. I wish I had spoken about it earlier that day because yeah, right. I would have had a lot better day. Yeah. Like I, I didn't have a great day in regard to – it wasn't a terrible day but it could have been a better day and it was my, my fault because I was too scared of talking about stuff, you know. Have you taken that out of the show and, and, and implemented 100%. that in, into your everyday life now? 100%. Yeah, yeah wow. absolutely. So, yeah, things like that were really good. And, you know, that, that was the thing I was saying about talking to a guy like Tummy, like so wise and so passionate about what he believed in and, you know, I had to work so hard to get other people to start to understand why he was doing certain things, even if they didn't feel at the time 
it was the right thing or saw him as a danger or saw him as an enemy. He, he just stuck with it and believed in it and, you know, it's, yeah. Anyway, that, that was, um, yeah, that was probably my biggest concern going into the game because I knew that it was, it was that time period yeah. and I was yeah. wondering no matter where I was, how is that going to, how, when, when it happened, I go, right, in 12 months time, what, what is going to happen on this day? How am I going to feel? I, I've got that exact same thing. Similar time of year is where my father passed away, February 17th. Yeah. I know it's, it's imprinted into my head. Yeah. And it is like that. When it's coming up to that date, you clam up and you're thinking, shit, how am I going to feel about this? What's going to be dredged up? What's going to trigger me? Yeah. And it's, a, it's an interesting thing, isn't it? An experience to kind of go through knowing that there's going to be grief there and you're going to have to deal with it. Yeah. One, <clears throat> one of the, the great things, I suppose, when I was here when we had Sonny – Fi, who um, you know, he drowned, and it was terrible. I got on really, really good with Sonny, and so um, I then decided to get a tattoo, um, you know, in honour of Sonny. And my wife sort of said, "So, someone special means so much to you in your life. You're going to get a tattoo every time they pass." And I go, "Well, no, no." And she goes, well, "Why are you just going to get one tattoo? Why don't you get a tattoo that represents?" whatever it is that you're trying to represent. And I said, oh, okay. So I was good mates with Tiki Tane. And so, you know, I was, I rang up Tiki and probably the best person to ring up about tattoos because <laughs> yeah, yeah. he has yeah, got a He's lot. got a couple. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a lot. And, um, yeah, so I rang Tix and I sort of said, you know, I want to get this tattoo to signify that. And so his, his cousin or his bro, uh, Inia Taylor, and he is very, like he did once for Warriors, all the tattooing on that, and and um, he's done Case Muse and a few famous New Zealanders. I I went to him, um, and it was out sort of towards Bethel's Way where Sonny drowned, and um, the tattoo I got it sort of goes from here to here. It's like a sleeve. It's got a whole lot of stuff that's my story because it's sort of like a Maori sort of Pacifica type sleeve. And I didn't want to come across as being a plastic, just turning up yeah. here and, oh, he's an Aussie trying to carry on and be like us. Yeah. I sort of said to Inia about that and Inia said, mate, it's like Chinese. You don't have to be Chinese to eat Chinese, you know, and it's your story. And as long as you know what all the things mean to you, that's what's most important. And I go, sweet, that's a great way to ex explain it. So it took 24 hours to to do this tattoo and the last bit was tap tap he did the old style so it's got you know indigenous in it for obviously where i'm from australia um my heritage is celtic so it's um english scottish and welsh um so it's a lot of those patterns in there um as well as pacifica like um maori tongan samoan um, fijian because of the people that i played with or had a lot to do with um and yeah it's got a turtle that in the middle of that that represents my spiritual side so he chose the turtle because in pacifica they were saying about um you know man made an agreement with turtle that when someone passed who was important that um in return the um turtles would come and lay their eggs on the beach and then the turtle would take the spirits and free them to the ocean as if you know as a as an interaction and um we did the turtle and while we were going through that process, it was three weekends of eight-hour sessions in a row, and it was before the 2009 season, so I got it done before the season started. Sonny went missing on the 4th, I think, of January, and um, 4th or 5th, 4th, I think, we started training on the 5th, and he's telling me all the stuff as we're going along of all the meanings, you know, the shark teeth, um, about continuous strength, they just keep on coming forward. Um, waves, another one that's continuous strength, all of these things. And then I've got the turtle and it's got two eyes on its shell, which is a spiritual eyes overlooking me and my family and friends that are here. And it's the people who are no longer here that are very special to me. Um, the four legs are the kudus of my, obviously my grandparents. Um, who are very important to me and uh, the shell is obviously protection um, and shelter and that type of thing. So we're going through this process every time. You, you imagine 24 hours of spending time with someone 
and he's so knowledgeable. Anyway, the tattoo was done on the Sunday night. On the Monday morning early, he rung me and he goes, bro, he goes, they're not going to find Sonny. And I said, how can you say that? And he said, I'm telling you, they're not going to find Sonny. He said, there was a turtle washed up on Murawai Beach this morning and he had a photo of it and there was a person lying beside it and it was almost toe to toe, right? So it's a very old turtle, big old turtle that's washed up and par- you know passed on the beach. He goes, the ocean has given something special from it to the land to say thank you for giving something special from the land to the ocean in Sunny. So he said he'll never be found and he hasn't to been this day. And the turtle is what he chose as the spiritual side of it. So it's crazy how that happened the next day after the tur- the the tattoo was finished so it's quite crazy i i sort of i'm not right into a whole lot of stuff but i do believe there's something else and and i am very spiritual in regard to that so it's a really special tattoo to me and it was quite ironic that sunny was the one who possessed me to do it and all the people who have passed even dad they're they're a part of that turtle now um, which is cool for me to know